everyone, welcome back and if you haven't been here before, my name is Ava and I'm a PhD student from UCL. So today I thought I'd talk about eye movement desensitization therapy or EMDR, which is usually used to treat people who have experienced a traumatic event. So I'm going to be describing what it is, what it might look like in one patient and some of the potential mechanisms of action that have been suggested. However, a lot of research is still unclear as to how exactly this therapy works. So these are just some suggestions and some theories which still require further evidence and research. EMDR originated in 1987 by Shapiro. When preoccupied with disturbing thoughts, she realised that rapid eye movements produced significant relief when feeling upset. This then created 30 years of experimentation, which gradually formulated EMDR. There are now currently over 20 randomised controlled trials of EMDR, as well as hundreds of clinical observations or clinical sessions using this therapy for different types of trauma, such as child abuse, combat trauma, physical sexual abuse and neglect. It has been strongly recommended in practical guidelines by both the American Psychiatric Association and the International Society for Traumatic Stress. Briefly, I'm going to describe the phases in which this occurs within the sessions and then I'll go into some of the mechanisms of action. So EMDR is an individual therapy usually conducted one to two times a week, usually for around six to 12 sessions. Phase one includes the client's history, explaining their background as well as the traumatic events that are currently distressing them. Phase two is preparation, and this is when the theory of EMDR is explained, as well as addressing client's fear and their expectations. Phase three, is the assessment where negative cognitions are identified, positive cognitions or thoughts are named and emotions are identified. Phase four is desensitization and this is when the eye movements are used to reduce the client's anxiety about an event. Stage five is installation. This is where the positive cognition or thought is emphasized and is also linked to the target issue in the event. Phase six is another round of desensitization where the eye movements occur. Phase seven is closure in which the client is returned back to a positive frame of mind and the client should then be safe to return home. The last phase is the reevaluation and use of the EMDR and this is when the clinician assesses how well it worked and therefore determines whether the client needs further processing. It uses many different components such as body-centered cognitive behavioral, experimental, interpersonal and psychodynamic approaches in order to maximize the treatment effects using a variety of different methods. This involves thinking about your bodily sensations, thinking about disturbing images, self-thoughts and emotions. The eye movement usually occurs by thinking of a specific moment in the trauma and following the finger of the therapist, although it can also be done in different ways, such as tapping the client's knees and also potentially the client's closing their eyes and their eyes still moving in the left and right direction. So now let's think of mechanisms of action. Firstly, working memory. So this is the leading psychological explanation to explain how it works and it suggests that the dual attention task or the eye movement as well as a visual imagery taxes the capacity of the working memory. Therefore, our ability to process visual spatial information which is centered around our executive memory functioning. The competition in resources from having to think about this traumatic event while also conducting this eye movement degrades the traumatic material making it seem slightly less emotional and sensory therefore reducing the vividness of the memory and making you more emotionally detached when you're thinking about it and therefore specific cognitions or thoughts can be targeted at the same time to kind of alter the way that you think about this event while it's not experienced so vivid and distressingly. Also, direct non-intrusive physiological response, engaging with orientating the individual's response. This meaning that if pathologies are represented by dysfunctional processing of information that is physically stored, EMDR produces somatic shifts, increasing parasympathetic input, and this can be seen by the increased breathing rate and decreased heart rate during the eye movement. This means that physical processes that occur when you're stressed, such as this increased breathing and palpitations, are reduced during this period of time where you have continuous bilateral stimulation by looking from left to right. This makes people more able to focus on the traumatic content of their event because they are de-stressed physically. This activates the episodic detailed material of the event and is able to integrate it into semantic memory. And semantic memory is the memory of the meanings behind things. So being able to change the meanings behind things into your memory because of this slightly more relaxed state. Also, this 
enhanced hypnotic states. As individuals engage in this bilateral stimulation, they go into a state that falls between being awake and dreaming. This is because the bilateral stimulation is associated with the adaptive function of REM, which is rapid eye movement that occurs during sleep. There are indirect accounts and evidence that REM mediates the therapeutic effect of the MDR. That eye movement with slow wave sleep has a seminal role in memory association and reorganization in certain neural frameworks. Therefore, new memories are consolidated and new associations are made due to this eye movement occurring similar to REM. There's also another hypothesis that suggests that it improves neural integration via thalamic binding. This is that the sensory bilateral stimulation stimulates areas of neural networks that are responsible for cognitive and emotional processing. This means increased cognitive control towards hyperactive emotional affecting systems and therefore decreasing emotional distress as you have more cognitive control over your feelings and emotions. Lastly, structural and functional changes, which has been supported by neuroimaging findings that found hyperarousal of regions of the brain associated with emotions during a EMDR session, especially in a default mode network, which has been seen to be dysfunctional in people with PTSD. Therefore, traumatic material is being processed in a cognitive level, activating regions of the brain that are associated with cognitive control of feelings, as well as the structural implications of increasing volume. So now that I've explained some of the theories that might explain how EMDR works, I'm going to give one example of someone who had a choking phobia and how EMDR helped them. So for one patient who had a choking phobia, um, this was due to experiencing an accident in which their jaw was fused together during a hospital stay and they had an experience of seeing patients being resuscitated next to them due to choking and also this person had a tube in their lungs which was not placed correctly by the nurse and therefore in their panic they had to take out the tube themselves and experience this phobia of choking due to the malpractice that was occurring in the hospital as well as the feelings of their jaw being wide shut and this choking phobia that was also affected by eating afterwards as their teeth were not aligned in the right way due to this accent they had meant that they were unable to go to the dentist and have imprints taken of their mouth in order to place their teeth in the correct manner so that their jaw would be able to close properly. So the choking phobia that this patient had not only affected their ability to eat and drink because they were focusing on the swallowing experience, but also affected their rehabilitation from the accident as they felt anxiety over this dentist appointment. This person seems to be treatment resistant as they had been through many other types of therapy before and this had not reduced their phobia and then went through EMDR where they had to focus on a specific part of this experience which promoted the most high anxiety and then to do this eye movement desensitization. While in the beginning the patient felt very anxious when doing this eye movement while thinking about this certain period of time feeling like they were choking and feeling a lot of anxiety. And then they had to discuss with the therapist in future sessions where they want to continue. There were some rapid effects with this patient where they did seem to be a lot less distressed in future sessions. I'm just gonna give a few examples of what the patient was saying when they were going through this eye movement desensitization and how this eventually rapidly decreased their distress and they were able to go to the dentist and not focus so much on choking when swallowing and that the reduced anxiety they felt that was very low was actually sustained in follow-up one year after their treatment and they only went through a few sessions. Of course, this is different for every person and some trauma that people experience is very different and more complicated than others and the specific event that will be thought of in EMDR will be different and there may be ma many that need to be processed during these sessions which will require more sessions in general. So an example of what the patient said I still have a dry mouth and then they do this set of eye movements. It really is dry. The feeling's gone. That's weird, isn't it? How do you explain it? My palms are still sweaty, not from fear, but from what I'm feeling now. It's really strange, that feeling in my throat. It was just as if something was stuck there. Then I felt it shrink away. Yes, it's very odd. I'm very impressed. Do you still feel stressed at all? No, I'm simply going to try. I can't choke. I said that last time too. Everybody has told me so, but I now feel a bit more positive. Hang on to that feeling. And then another set of eye movements. I feel so good. I have a lovely feeling inside. I'm gonna do it next time. I'm gonna do it, I must. I must be able to, I simply must. I'm going for it. 
What I feel now, I can very easily put into words. A fighting feeling. It's now or never. That's what it is, you know? Isn't that a nice feeling to have? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that example, as well as the explanation into what different theories might explain what EMDR is. If you have any questions about what I spoke about or any ideas of future videos, then please comment below. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Have a good day.